Leon Lee hit me up recently and they said, Paul, we'd like to sponsor a video on your channel to show off our new O11 Vision PC Master Race Edition computer case. So I said, okay, Leon Lee, I'll play your game. I first saw the O11 Vision at Computex back in June, where it was demonstrated to me by my good friend Pedro, who is also the arbiter of the PC Master Race subreddit. And it absolutely has some unique, compelling, and particularly visually appealing features. But if you know me, when I do sponsored content, I don't like to just do a sponsored video. I like to have a purpose, a goal in mind. So I'm planning a follow-up video where we're going to do a really nice build in this case, like a really, really nice top-end build in this case. And it's going to have a new home soon, which is going to be for my editor, Joe. So today, as we take a closer look at this case, which is available in two colors, black and white, we're going to be making some early decisions about that build with Joe's input, of course. So welcome to my Lian Lee O11 Vision PC Master Race Edition case showcase, where we're going to show you the case. Excellent! First part of a build showcase video is to get the cases out of their boxes. Leon Lee was kind enough to send us both the black and the white version here so that we could take a look at both and then make that crucial decision as to which one we should actually use to build Joe's system with. The other one is going to be a giveaway. So if you guys aren't already aware, we're having a charity live stream on December 9th. It's a Saturday. Kyle and I will be streaming for about eight hours or so. We'll be raising money for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals through Extra Life. So uh, if you want to join us, by all means do so. I'm trying to be careful because this case has three tempered glass side panels that meet in the corner right up here. Obviously they survived the shipping process with no problem, but it is something that I want to be a little bit, a little bit delicate with. Could have been more smooth with that one. We've at least answered the first question, which is how does Lian Lee ship these cases and make sure that they stay pristine in the shipping process? They have these little rubber strips that they've put between the tempered glass side panels, um, which are rubber. So they're kind of squishy. And I know it's kind of a random logistical thing, but that's one something that popped into my head when I first saw the case was how are they going to ship the thing? Before we get too far along, let's open up the white version of the case as well. We're gonna take a first look sort of at the white version here since it's very bright and easy to see. But Joe already said he's kind of leaning towards the black version, but you know, we don't need to really make that decision right away. I'm gonna start attempting to remove some of these panels and this is really my first time physically working with this case directly. So I hope I'm doing this correctly. The three pieces of tempered glass here do have a connecting piece in the corner and you can see with the white version, they've done sort of a sort of a gradient pattern there to, to mask that off just a little bit while still giving you pretty much the clean look that they were going for, which has those three corners lining up. The tempered glass panels themselves though do have uh, some strips along either side and that's to hold on these little pegs. The pegs slot in along this line right there. So again, makes it pretty easy, at least for this top panel, to unscrew and remove. And of course we have captive thumb screws on the other side to keep things tidy so you don't lose your thumb screws. Captive thumb screw shirts available at paulshardware.net. This side panel just has a single th captive thumb screw there that holds that piece on and then it will angle out like so. And here you can see that the corner of this one also connects, has a metal piece right there. And then there's magnets in this that will hold the top piece and the side panel on. And then this is actually connected to this single front panel piece uh, with a couple screws. So you could remove that if you really need to, I suppose. But you probably do want to leave that on so that you can have um, some form of connection and support between the three tempered glass panels. I'm trying not to remove these rubber strips along here, as well as the protective uh, cover for the tempered glass itself. Because whichever of these cases we give away, I want to keep that case as pristine as I can. I think this panel is screwless. Let me tug on it. Yep. It's like something's holding it on up there. Oh, there we go. All right. Rear side panel is screwless. It's got the little plugs that uh, fit into these little catch points right there that holds it on. So that's easy enough to remove. You can probably see plenty of ventilation on that side panel as well. Since the, Lee and Lee originally did the O11 dynamic and sort of popularized this layout for cases 
Using this space right here for fans or a fan and radiator combo has become much more popular. And that's why Leanne Lee has been able to design this case with three tempered glass side panels, because even though those tempered glass side panels don't allow any airflow through, and Leanne Lee isn't trying to pitch this case as like the optimal ideal air-cooled case or anything like that. Even when they were showing it off at Computex, they said, this isn't gonna be like peak performance in terms of cooling. It's perfectly adequate for anything you wanna throw in there, but there are probably gonna be some cases on the market that use mesh more liberally that would get slightly better temperatures in this one. But I think Lian Lee also recognizes that lots of PC builders like to build a system that's unique, that's somewhat special, that is visually appealing perhaps, and that's why they've gone with this layout, again, with plenty of vision on the inside of the case, which is, that's why they called it the O11 Vision. Ah, oh, this is all, it's all clicking. It's all fitting together now. Let's talk radiator support. I busted out the manual to make sure I was being accurate here. First off on the bottom, you have a removable tray here, and that is very nice feature, especially for a higher end case, being able to pull that tray out to mount your radiator or your fans is a great feature. Down here you have support for 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fans. You can do up to three of those. You can do a 360 millimeter uh, radiator here with three 120s, or you can do a 280 millimeter radiator with two 140s. For your side intake here, you can also do 120 or 140 millimeter fans. You can do up to three 120s or a 360 millimeter radiator, or you can do two 140s here and a 280 millimeter radiator. Then here at the back you can see there's room for one fan right now, a 120 millimeter fan, but the motherboard is actually on a motherboard tray that's also removable and the motherboard tray has two different positions. You can move it to low mode and shift it down and if you shift it down, which we're going to do in just a second, that opens up this for another uh, 120 or 240 millimeter radiator that can also be installed. Speaking of radiator brackets, let's show you those. Two screws hold this one in and then that just lifts out like so for your mounting purposes. There is a mesh dust filter below that that's also accessible from the side. In my opinion, if you're gonna have a bottom dust filter on a case, that's the best way to do it because that's probably gonna be the side that is actually accessible when you actually have the case, you know, sitting on a desk or somewhere up off the floor, which is where computers should be. I've had these where they pull out from the front before and the chances that you have complete clearance out in front to like slide an entire one of these out, I don't know, maybe you do with your setup, but I just find the side mount is a little bit better for that. While we're on the subject of removable radiator and fan mounting brackets, you also have a screw here. Uh, once you unscrew that, you can, you can, I forget if you lift. Oh yeah. <laughs> Push that down and that releases this and then this entire radiator bracket can pull out too. And that's where you would mount your side fans or radiator or both. I would now like to shift the motherboard down to the lower position. I'm told there's a way to do that. Should I check the manual? Or should I just, should I just do it and see what happens? There appears to be a thumb screw here that's holding it in partially. There's another screw down here and you might note this top expansion bracket, like PCIe slot expansion bracket is a little different. It's a little, a little different. It's actually not attached to this same housing with the rest of those pieces. It has an extra screw back there. So let me undo that. When I first saw this, I was so fascinated and somewhat baffled. It's one of these little attention to detail pieces that Leanne Lee has installed here because different motherboard layouts might be different. And they wanted this case to be broadly compatible with a lot of different uh, motherboard sizes and specs and features. So it does support EATX motherboards, although you will have a little bit of an extension going out this side if you do install EATX there. We should do a test fitting of an EATX motherboard in a moment because who knows, maybe we'll be installing an EATX motherboard in the build that we do for Joe. But here you can see the manual where it's showing you that you can take this piece out, you can uh, flip it 180 degrees or you can rotate it 90 degrees. So you can rotate this or you can remove it entirely and uh, that's just to give you potentially more clearance depending on your motherboard layout here and also depending on whether or not you're opting for a 240 millimeter radiator here. Radiators can often have like a little bubble on one end or the other. So that's giving you just a little bit more clearance so you can actually fit that in a little bit more flexibility for your build. Back to that low mode setup though, there is a bracket down here held on by a thumb screw. So we're gonna remove that and then we're gonna lower this entire motherboard tray. So for that, we've got more thumb screws on the back. I don't know how long you guys have been building computers, but this used to be like the peak in terms of case design was a removable motherboard tray. You could remove the whole tray, you could actually install your motherboard to this if you wanted and then install the motherboard tray into the case 
With this case, you have the option to do that. You could do that if you wanted, of course, or you could simply take advantage of the fact that this is a adjustable motherboard tray that you can reposition lower down. Basically pop that a little bit here, slide down, and it fits in low mode right down there. Then we take this bracket that was removed, reinstall it back there at the top, reattach it with our thumb screws here. And hopefully you guys can see, but there's actually some metal plugs here that uh, engage with the case. So in the upper position or the lower position, and then you use that other uh, spot there to th screw in your thumb screw to secure it in the position that you've chosen. Oh, does that explain these grommets? And that solves the mystery. Okay, <laughs> that also solves our mystery. Um, our cases came with two extra little grommets and I was looking at them and I thought like, well, that's a funny little thing. Where is that supposed to go? And we couldn't find any obvious place on the case where these would fit in until <laughs> we actually did the motherboard shift and that revealed that uh, that exposes a couple more pass-through points since the top of your motherboard is gonna be right here now and obviously there's typically a lot of like CPU, power connectors, stuff like that going on up there. It gives you a couple gaps to still pass those through while also covering up these unsightly unfinished edges uh, with grommets because obviously high-end case can't have anything like that going on. Oh yeah, that's cool. And you can even flip those around uh, so you can put these little pass-through points in different locations depending on your needs. I was about to say, depending on whether or not you have a radiator mounted at the top of your case, you're not going to have that with this case because it's a tempered glass panel up there. But depending on your layout and your needs, you can shift that motherboard down. That's of course gonna give you less room down at the bottom here for fans and a radiator there, but flexibility is the name of the game. Now that we've shifted the motherboard, uh, you can see 240 millimeter uh, radiator can be mounted right there or dual fans if you wanna go that route. And I, I was appreciating this uh, removable piece right here, but I, I was kind of baffled how you actually flip it around. You actually wanna spin it that way and then you can tuck it in like so. And that gives you, see, that much clearance to fit the radiator down there. Again, a little attention to detail, but I'm sure that's going to provide a lot more flexibility for people who are building a water-cooled system in this case and want to max out the radiator support. We're gonna rotate around to the back of the case now to show the rest of the features, but uh, here is your power button. If you guys are familiar with the O11 Evo, it had a power button you could push from both sides. So you can push it from there or you can push it from there either way. They've also put a little reset button right, right there. So reset is nice to have too. Over here on the rear panel, I already showed you the removable uh, rack here for a radiator and fans, but uh, this vertical mount here, you can mount SSDs or 2.5 inch drives to probably SSDs. In other O11 cases, this has been a removable piece. Now they've made it swing out. Ooh with magnets, so just swing it out like that. You also have your case accessories back here. Let me undo that real quick. Back here, we also have the PCMR Lian Lee logo. Since this is a PC Master Race edition of the O11 Vision, it's nice to have that there. It's in a good location. We also have our front panel connector cables, and I like the attention to detail here as well. They're all white. If you're going for an all white, a white out build, that can be a little challenging to do depending on what components you're using. So I like that Lian Lee has chosen white end connectors for all these. Couldn't quite go 100% uh, with the HD audio cables there, but um, I don't know, maybe use a little, little white out or something on that. It would take care of it. Some Velcro straps here to help you tie down everything. And that is one of the real great benefits uh, for the Lian. Oh, hey, I just noticed another feature of this swing out thing. It swings out all the way around. The knockout here allows uh, that little thumb screw to pass through and then it magnetizes itself there as well. That, I feel like that has to be intentional. Yeah, there's a magnet right there to hold it in place while you do your cable management or mount 2.5 inch drives there. How thoughtful. But back to what I was saying, so much room back here for tucking away cables and everything. And they've even included an adjustable bracket right here. So your tie down points here, look at that. You just pop it out. It's got grommets on that. You could pass cables behind that if you wanted to, or you can just position this uh, higher or lower or wherever you need it to be to most effectively tie down your cables. Another cool little attention to detail in this case. Slipping around to the back here, you do have a couple 3.5 inch drive cages. These are removable. So if you don't have any mechanical drives, you can pop them out to repurpose that area. If you are going to put some spinning mechanical drives into a case like this, I prefer they be mounted with some rubberized mounts so that it absorbs a little bit of the vibration you get from spinning mechanical drives. And they've also put cable tie downs on the back of that as well to help you with your cable management wherever possible. These are also pretty easy to remove with one thumb screw and then they just pop up like that. 
nice and simple. And again, with those drive cages removed, you can see so much room for activities back here. And I imagine for water cooling builds in particular, maybe we'll see pumps or something like that positioned back here, depending on whether or not you want that out in the main area. Finally, this is where your power supply would mount. It's got a little foot for your power supply to sit on uh, with a little bit of rubber on it to absorb some vibration from fan spinning. And it's got a little booty section that's, that sits out right there. I don't know what else to call it. Just a little booty bump that sits up, but that gives you, again, a little bit more space for your power supply so you can fit a longer power supply in there, maybe a higher wattage option. And again, give you plenty of room on this side of it for connecting up your modular cables and handling your cable management. And again, for ease of installation with a couple screws. Oh, wait, sorry, three screws. Oh, oh there's another one. Make that four screws, but then you can remove this bracket as well, uh, and that allows you to mount your power supply to that. I think we've mostly covered the features of this case, other than like, you know, typical standard case features that don't even bear mentioning. Here's a quick look at the bottom. You can see big rubber pads on the feet to protect your desk, provide a little bit of vibration dampening. And you can see the IO, which is passed down here through the bottom, and that is actually connected to one of the feet right there. And that gives you a mic and headphone jack USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2, as well as a couple USB 3.0 ports. And while it does look like they've given you um, some screw points right here to actually remove that foot if you needed to, or to get to some of the uh, connective pieces at the bottom of the case, unlike the O11 Evo, where you can actually take this and reposition it, it looks like this is in a fixed spot on this case. And oh yeah, accessories. We got a nice little plastic accessory box here, which includes a couple zip ties. And look, they give you white zip ties for the white case. Cool. We also have some brackets here. There is a, a GPU support bracket that's uh, sort of integrated as part of the case. Oh, actually that's the GPU support bracket right there, which you can mount to the bottom. Then we've got some uh, extra grommets here for rubberizing things. They give you extra separators here so you can continue to use this little plastic case and you know organize your screws in it. Speaking of screws, there are all of your screws. Looks like you got fan screws and other screws for mounting drives and all the screws, good screws. So we have now completed sort of a once over of these, well, the white case at least, to give you guys an idea of the internal workings. Some things I think are gonna be really nice and helpful as we actually build a system in one of these cases. And that's the next question. Joe, you've had a chance to take a look at both. You got the white, you got the black. Are you, are you leaning one way or the other? For RGB reasons, because there's a party monster, I wanna have a bunch of RGB. I think black will be a good contrast for all the lights. That's true. If you guys uh, want to check it out, I'll post a link to Joe's Party Monster build uh, in the video's description. That build is a little crazy, it was a little wild. It was very colorful. And I think since this is also Lee and Lee, maybe we can hit them up and see if we can get like the streamer, the streamer in there. That'd be cool. Maybe some of their Uni Infinite fans that have like the mirrors on the side that give you the infinite look with the RGB. Lots of RGB, I think, would be great to go for. It makes the PC faster, right? Yes, that would also make the PC faster. But that means for anyone who might be joining us for the charity live stream on December 9th, this white version of the case, which we've tried our best to make sure stays pristine and immaculate. I did leave the motherboard in that lower position, so keep that in mind. But that means this one's gonna be going up for giveaway. So I'm gonna box it back up real quick. I'm so happy that we're proceeding with the goals for this video. Uh, showcase, show the case. We're choosing the case. Joe has chosen the black version of the case, so this will now be Joe's case and the build. We're gonna be building in this one. I can't share too much of the details of that build quite yet, but let's do a test fitting of a motherboard because we wanna test a larger motherboard and for no particular reason, I have randomly chosen this ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard, which is an X399 motherboard for the original Threadripper series. We have laid the case on its side, and this is an EATX motherboard. So uh, just to give you guys an idea of what this is gonna look like in here, because it is gonna extend out this way just a little bit. And since this is Joe's case, uh, we haven't repositioned the motherboard. It's still in the upper position. Funny thing about this motherboard, Asus put this uh, heat sink right here, which is bolted through the back in two of the motherboard standoff locations. You can actually remove these screws and then remount uh, this heat sink through and mount it directly to the motherboard standoffs. But since we're just doing a test fit though, I'm just gonna remove those two standoffs for now. And we'll slide this in. There it is, a uh, loosely installed motherboard. 
So hopefully this gives you guys a little bit better idea of how an EATX motherboard will fit in this case. It extends out a little bit over here, but hey, that's gonna help you know hide those unsightly areas where you have to pass your cables back through those grommets. Actually, there's very nice grommets on all the pass-through areas on this case, so that's not really an issue. But I'm just glad that we have support for those larger size motherboards because my plan for this build all along has been to use a larger size motherboard. And I don't know if I can or should give you any other hints beyond that. There's probably several of you who have easily figured out what the heck we're going for with this planned build, which will be coming in early December, by the way. My plan to finish off this video was to do the peel, at least in the case that we chose, and you know, peel off the protective uh, stuff off of the tempered glass. But Joe said no. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want to jinx anything. Doesn't want any bad luck for his build. So we're gonna save the peel for when we actually finish the build in this case. So I guess for now, that's pretty much all we have to show you for this showcase showing you the new case from Lian Lee, the O11 Vision PC Master Race Edition, with another follow-up video coming very soon where I'll be building a full system, in this case, the black one. So if you guys have any feedback for us, any suggestions for things we might do to make that special, if you guys have any theories about the parts we will be using in the build, uh, feel free to leave those in the comment section as well. It's probably gonna be the fastest computer that I have ever assembled, and it's not even gonna be for me. It's gonna be for Joe. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Big thank you to Lee and Lee for sponsoring this video. Big thank you to Pedro for reaching out to me and being like, hey, the PC Master Race O11 Vision is coming out soon. Uh, let's get something going for that. And I'll post links in the video's description to the Lee and Lee website for this case, as well as the PC Master Race subreddit, as well as Joe's YouTube channel. You guys can check that out too. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Check out the description for a link to my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and all manner of high quality merchandise to help support my channel and get yourself high quality merchandise. We'll see you guys all in the next video. <laughs>